two player of 2013 here at BlizzCon. Over here in the upper right, in the red, up one game so far, make some noise for SOS. And in the bottom left, the legend from Brood War here to prove he can be the legend now in StarCraft II. He is Jadog! He is intense right now. To have lost that game. Oh, we, oh. looks like we might have a um, pause here. Looks like we do in fact have a pause. Yeah, I think it was uh, Jadon putting his headset on. He's just doing it now in the booth. But <laughs> oh, I, I, all right. I really agree. I mean, he was intense, man. That stare as we were loading into this next map. I think that would it. Yes, it is. It would have. It really would have angered him that first map. That would have made him oh, yeah. so much more determined for this next one. That would be so frustrating. That first map. All right. Uh, so, anyways, we're back into this game. Uh, again, the map is derelict watcher. And you know what, SOS that was just on the screen there, he actually looked very calm. He looked very collected and not even really nervous. It's, it's, it's really interesting. He just seems unfazed uh, at all by this entire experience. He's, he's totally clutch. Are we seeing mind games happen here, oh Autosis? Are we going to see another early forge? Yeah, we are. This, this is another oh. cannon rush. So is he saying that you can't, I mean, is Jadong saying you can't cannon rush me twice in a row? You know what's crazy about this? Let's say that SOS wins here. Let's say that this strategy looks like the last strategy that we saw in game number one. This will forever change the way we understand Protoss. Well, SOS is going for it. We don't see a second probe this time. Of course, this is not a map you're going to go low ground. Oh, what is... Okay, the drone coming out. Almost looking for something weird going on. And will the probe... Oh, oh. Apollo, it's happening. It is happening, and well, guess what, Autosis? Uh, you cannot get in between <laughs> those two pylons. Yeah, due to the architecture here, it's it, he can actually just make a cannon with it blocked <laughs> off, and Jadong is probably going to be forced to cancel here. This is like SOS's thing, finding funny places that you can't get into. So this cannon rush is already basically successful. Jadong is not going to be able to stop it. I don't even know what it means if Jadong loses to cannons in the finals of Ooh. this. This is insane. All right, now the drones are coming down here. Uh, Kenny, oh, nice wall up there. Oh. If, if he gets these cannons up, he's going to have to cancel this hatchery that'll put Zerg in a really bad position. You know what? This is exactly what SOS wants. He gets two free drones now as well. Jadong is way further behind than he was in the first game. That was so much more successful. Jadong, in that circumstance, thought he could break it. Thought. That's the reason why he pulled the drones, but he couldn't. I have to imagine that Jadong is livid right now. In game number two, Cannon's already foiling his plans. Well, this, this is a terrible spot to be in. You know, he's already lost a couple extra drones. Look at this, he has four Zerglings. What are those Zerglings gonna do? See that there's mm. a cannon at his opponent's base? Great job, Zerglings. All right, we see the Lynx now uh, completely rendered impotent. There's nothing they can really do here. Um, He's going to go ahead, uh, SOS is going to go ahead and tech up, get his gas. And from here, SOS has a series of very good options for how to carry out a win. Yeah, I think it was a really smart play from SOS because when you open up with a cannon rush in game number one, Jadong's going to be thinking, yeah, he's not going to do it twice, and therefore decided to go back to his original build that we almost saw him try to pull off in game number one. And SOS was able to play that mind game, and he won it, and he gained the advantage. What, what do you guys think Jadong's going to do in this game? Because I think if we look at the last game, it's, it's fair to say that he handled that bizarre situation really, really well. It was the uh, end game where he kind of uh, wasn't able to really follow suit. Will Jadong do something similar, or is he going to do something more aggressive and all-in-ish? You know what? I think he has to do something similar. I think he has to play kind of a safe game overall. I would definitely expect Stargate here, although some some Protosses like to go for Warp Gate Rush because you have the po proxy pylon already up and secure. So he has to just watch out for something like that as well. Well, Jadong is taking both the gases at the exact same time as the previous game. So. So far, it does look like he is mirroring what he did previously. Well, you know, it's really safe, and I think that opening like this will pretty much always get him into at least 
a four base situation before SOS has a really dedicated attack. How soon do you guys expect SOS to take the third? Because the third base on this map is a little funky. It's not the easiest thing to get to. Well, we've, right now, we're actually seeing plus one attack being researched again. And Chrono Boost going into the side net. It's called rushing out that warp gate research. He's not mining the most amount of gas from his main base, if I just glance at that real fast there. So I think we could be seeing a gateway attack come from SOS here. You know, I think a timing could be really effective here. I mean, Zerg is already uh, economically a little bit staggered here. So maybe a move in like that uh, could do the damage that he needs to do. Well, let's see how many gates he gets. Will it be just four? Will it be five, six, seven? We don't know quite yet. Looks like if he is going to make more, he's going to spread them out. And you know what? If he doesn't have a Roach Warren, that's going to be very scary when those Zealots warp in. All right, two Evolution Chambers. So right now, uh, Jadon kind of investing in the in the late game, in the long run. And you got to think, if the Protoss does have a good timing attack, this pylon, he has a proxy pylon right there where the cannons are. He can yeah. actually warp in an army and attack him right away. But he doesn't have another one anywhere else, so it seems very simple if that were to be the attack and the strategy. Yeah, but look, I mean, the warp gate just now finishes, oh. and, and the, the, the cannons are still there, the pylons are still there, and now he's gonna go for double Stargate. Well, you know what? I think he's gonna warp in around his Zealots, perhaps, harass a little bit with these Stalkers, the Zealot he already has, as well as those with the plus one, and then just go straight into Void Rays. And I think this is what we all described previously before this series started, the SOS would need to do. Outsmart, outthink, and just kind of outplay Jadon without physically fighting in, in kind of uh, just wars head-to-head -head mechanically. Yeah, it's kind of this weird, like, drunken boxing way of playing the game here from SOS, where he just gets in this position where he has complete control, and now the Zealots are attacking in here. The drones are going to be used to defend. This plus one attack doing a fantastic job. Look at that micro pulling back the hurt Zealot, not letting the Queens be too effective, and he has forced a lot of Zerglings and killed a lot of Zerglings. Uh, and he can, again, warp in more if he wants. We have two mm. Phoenixes now on the way. Four more Zealots warped in on the bottom. Mind you, he can attack from that proxy pylon, the north or the south. And you know what? I think the last thing he would have expected were these Stargates, but he did scout them, so he's going to have to be very careful. But without a Roach Warren, I mean, SOS has seen that this is double evolution chambers. He doesn't really aff can't afford a Roach Warren or Roaches, so at this point, he just continued to warp in more plus one attack Zealots. The angle here for the Zealots is really strong against these um, Zerglings. Zerglings now coming in here, but there's only, the Zerglings not quite getting uh, as good surface area as Jadong would want. The harassment continues. Well, he continues to warp in Zealots there as well. I think that the efficacy of this rush is basically used up. I, there's so many Zerglings out right now, and that one one about to finish, those are wasted unit rounds. But we do see Jadong previously just scouting out the Spire. I mean, scouting out the Stargates, but decided to go Spire still. I mean, what is that going to be? Is he going to go Mass Corruptor? Maybe Corruptor Muta? But then, you know, if he goes Mass Corruptor, can he actually get enough out in time before the Phoenixes have already paid for themselves in dividends, right? Uh, it's hard to say. I'm not exactly sure what he's planning there. And seeing the Spire, the Fleet Beacon does go down for SOS. It seems like everything Jadong is doing is playing into his plans. What we're seeing SOS do so far in this series, we've never really seen a Protoss do before. This is changing the way we see the game now. Uh, this technical harass, uh, starting out with a cannon rush, having a secured proxy pylon into this air harass, it's absolutely Absolutely beautiful. So what is that gas that Jadong has saved up? What is it for here? 1,200 of it saved, but what does he build? I, I still don't know. It, it looks like five Corruptors. It, maybe he just grabs a few of those and goes Muta and just says, you know what, I'm going to try to outplay this guy that has mass Phoenixes. What happens if it's Corruptor Zirkling only to try to break this third base? It's only Phoenixes, it's only Zealots, and remember, the Zirklings have a higher upgrade count now. Now, here's one thing going for Jadong. He did force a cancel over here. Will that be enough, though? The Phoenix harass and the Zealot harass continues. Look at this. The Zealots just continue to come in. As you say, Tasteless, they're going after the Spore right now so that the Phoenixes can come in, but there are the Corruptors. And we now have uh, the Zealots just doing so much damage at this point in time. Uh, you know, I think a lot of this goes back to the fact that that proxy pylon with the cannons was never taken out. And Jadon just doesn't have that high of a mineral income. His main base is consistently harassed. He's only mining fully off one base at this moment. Oh my god, and look at where he puts those Zealots. Just perfect placement against someone only making Zerglings. But luckily, with these better upgrades, he will clear this out as well.
So many queens have been picked off here. You know, the Phoenixes are so agile, they can get in and out and just avoid these corruptors with ease. SOS is playing such an intelligent playstyle right now. He's got two cannons there to support another pylon, where he can continue to harass and continue to warp in units to stop the income and economy of Jadong. This is beautiful play coming from SOS. It looks like SOS is a, maybe a minute or two away, actually maybe a second or two away, from forcing Jadong on two base. And this goes back to the basic theme of Protoss versus Zerg. Zerg always have to be ahead in a base or Protoss will dominate them. A, a perfect play here from SOS. So clever, so good. And he's continuing to upgrade his Phoenixes. He has so many, it makes sense. How does Jadong recover from this situation? And I'm not sure he can here from this point. He's losing so much. SOS, as you you know, vividly described, is playing so smart. This is some very intelligent play from game one and game two. We see the Phoenix is now strong enough to engage the Corruptors, uh, doing so much damage, and Zealot spinning in here. I don't know if Jadon can recover. It looks like he may be dying here, Tasteless and Apollo. Look at all of these Zealots just pushing forward. The Corruptors almost all gone. This is bad news for Jadon. Again, the Corruptors being beaten back. Nothing really here to stop these Zealots. And I think we're probably going to have to go into game number three. Yeah, even if Jadong's able to push this back with the roaches and corruptors he has, this is a very easy place for SOS to fall back onto a third and continue the game longer if Jadong does defend on what, these, what he has in bases at the moment. At this point, the Phoenix count is simply too high. They're being so efficient. It, it snowballed far out of his control. And I gotta wonder what's going on in Jadong's mind. How, how is he going to recover here um, in, in, as this series continues? Because SOS is playing like probably nothing Jadong prepared to face against. You can't prepare against something like this. This is a strategy that we basically never ever see, but SOS has used it and executed it like a strategy he does 10 times a day. And he's gone up to four Stargates now. He'll probably <laughs> throw down a third base momentarily, and he's just going to increase his Void Ray count. He realizes that Jadong only has Zerglings and Roaches to play around with. The air units aren't good when the Phoenixes are out in so many. The spore Crawlers won't even stop the number of Void Rays that he's going to be flying across the map with. This is it, it's a perfect move again by SOS, and Jadon cannot even switch into Hydralis from here. Yeah, I, right now this is like a checkmate. Yeah, GG. I, was, I think Jadon was uh, biting his time.